With over 500 hours of content uploaded to YouTube nearly every minute, there is bound to be some pretty weird and wacky stuff on this platform. This YouTube iceberg lays out some of the weirdest things YouTube has to offer. So if you clicked on this video, you probably already know how an iceberg chart works, but just in case, basically the higher up entries on the iceberg chart are supposed to be like pretty common knowledge, pretty well-known facts and information relating to YouTube, you know, stuff that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But the farther down the entries on the iceberg are, uh, the more obscure and like mysterious they're supposed to be. So where did this iceberg come from? <sighs> Reddit. Yeah, I'm just as disappointed as you, uh, but it doesn't stop this iceberg from being interesting nonetheless. Why don't we take a look at this iceberg and try and identify and define uh, all the entries on it. I'm gonna get some of that Minecraft gameplay going to help lighten the mood because uh, things are gonna get kind of weird. Here we go. No nursery rhymes. So what I think this entry on the list is referring to is just the copious amounts of really weird like nursery rhyme YouTube videos aimed towards kids on YouTube. So of course on YouTube you've got a lot of normal nursery rhyme videos. We're talking like these kind of like educational music videos that are aimed towards kids to like help them learn stuff. But for some reason there's also this kind of like subgenre of these nursery rhyme videos that are just super weird. Uh, like this subgenre of nursery rhyme videos we're talking about here are usually categorized by their super low budget and like super low effort look to them. They typically hold very little educational value, if any at all, and a lot of the time they are like barely even what could be considered a nursery rhyme. Like a lot of the time it's like barely even music. Lion, lion. And despite all this, some of these videos garner absolutely huge amounts of views. Basically, it's just really weird. Mobile game ads. YouTube kind of has this tendency to give people really weird and really misleading ads for mobile games. Sometimes the ads for mobile games YouTube gives you are just super low quality and super low effort and make no sense. And sometimes the game the ad is advertising for looks nothing like it does in the advertisement. And it's just super weird and really stupid. Logan Paul Suicide Forest. Back towards the end of 2017, popular YouTube vlogger Logan Paul went to Okigara Forest in Japan, a forest known to have many people kill themselves in it. Basically, Logan Paul went to this forest and filmed a dead guy in it. But not only did he just film the dead guy, he uh, put it in one of his vlogs and uploaded it to YouTube. Believe it or not, the video was not received particularly well, and it was promptly taken down, though in a lot of ways the damage had already been done. Logan Paul received a lot of deserved criticism, and the whole situation made a lot of news headlines, and the whole situation was just really messed up and terrible. Looking back on this whole thing, though, it really was just kind of a road bump in Logan Paul's career, considering he's still on YouTube. Uh, nowadays, he's making Pokemon card unboxing videos. Bot. So this entry on the list is a little bit random, but I'm pretty sure it's just referring to just bots you can find on YouTube. I think this entry on the list is probably specifically talking about, like, comment bots. You know how sometimes if you go into the comments of a YouTube video, there'll be commenters that are not actual people, but they're just bots, and they usually say just really stupid and, like, meaningless things. The Odd Ones Out is a furry. Uh, so, The Odd Ones Out is a pretty popular storytime animation YouTube channel. His videos are pretty alright, though I guess there's been a little bit of a rumor floating around recently that The Odd Ones Out is a furry. Uh, I guess people often cite the fact that he has a thousand dollar fursuit head that has made a lot of appearances in his videos and like pictures on social media uh, and that he talks about furries a lot in his videos a lot. So is The Odd Ones Out a furry? There are some people out there that are super convinced The Odd Ones Out is a furry. Uh, though if you ask me, uh, it, he's probably not. Uh, just straight up, he probably isn't. If you ask me, I think uh, The Odd Ones Out probably finds it kind of funny that people call him a furry, so he just kind of plays into the joke because it's funny. Um, though with this kind of stuff, you can never be too certain. Furry are a weird breed out there and you never know what they're gonna do. Fake claw machine videos. So on YouTube there's a pretty big genre of videos that are centered around claw machine games. 
These videos are usually about people winning prizes and stuff out of claw machines, and you know, the thumbnails and titles of these videos would lead you to believe that the people in these videos are legitimately winning prizes from these claw machines. Although, much of the time, these videos are pretty much fake. A lot of the time, the people in these videos aren't like going out to an actual arcade and winning prizes from actual claw machines. What often happens in a lot of these videos though, is people will have their own like personal claw machines that they have total control over, they can like control the likelihood of them winning a prize out of, and they'll make it look like it's a legit claw machine at an arcade, when in reality it's just like their own personal thing that they have total control over. YouTubers threatened on the dark web. They're there are a lot of things this entry could potentially be referring to, but I'm pretty sure this is kind of a joke entry on the iceberg. On YouTube, there's a pretty big genre of videos about people basically pretending to be abducted by people on the dark web or like buying mysterious things off the dark web or whatever. These videos are often like super clickbaity and they're aimed towards kids a lot of the time and they're super stupid. And I think this entry on the list is kind of making a joke about it. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe there was a YouTuber that was legitimately threatened by the dark web. I don't know though. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is a pretty popular series on YouTube. The series kind of like parodies the likes of Sesame Street or the Muppets, and the whole series kind of tells this really vague story that many people like to theorize about. It's a pretty good series. Um, there isn't really anything legitimately mysterious about it, but it is pretty cool. Soup.avi. So this entry on the iceberg uh, refers to a pretty mysterious video that's been uploaded on YouTube under many different names, although the most popular upload of the video is called BlankRoomSoup.avi. Basically, the video shows this man sitting in a pretty blank room eating soup while these weird two costumed figures approach him from behind and like start patting him on the back while he's crying. There are many rumors as to where this video originates from and what its true meaning is. Some people like to claim that this video came from the dark web and the man in the video is being held hostage by the two costumed figures. Although this is an interesting theory, there is pretty much no evidence to back it up like whatsoever. The characters in the video are known as Ray Ray, and they are the creations of the American animator and director Raymond S. Percy. Ray Ray have appeared in a lot of Raymond S. Percy's personal work, such as like stage shows and a couple of like videos on YouTube that were made by him. According to Raymond S. Percy, the costumes were stolen from him after a performance on the Hollywood Sunset Strip in the early 2000s. Raymond S. Percy has been reported to claim that the Soup.avi video was made by the people who stole the costumes from him, and the video was sent to him as kind of a weird fan letter or something like that. Whether or not this story is true is inconclusive, so uh, make make what you want out of this monstrosity of a video. Suicide Mouse. So, Suicide Mouse is this pretty old creepypasta about this, like, lost Mickey Mouse cartoon that caused people to kill themselves after watching it. This has led a lot of people to, like, pretend to upload this lost episode of Mickey Mouse to YouTube. It's a pretty, it's, 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 it is what it is. It's, uh, Salad Fingers. Uh, Salad Fingers is this, like, flash animation series on YouTube. Uh, it's pretty good. It's about this weird green guy named Salad Fingers and the weird desolate wasteland world that he resides in. It's, it's pretty spooky. It's pretty good. User 666. Uh, so on YouTube, there's a channel called Nana825763 that has a video on it called Username666. The video shows this guy going on YouTube and trying to search for a channel called 666, but only to find that the channel has been suspended. Eventually, though, the guy in the video starts, like, reloading the page to see if he can find the channel 666, and as he starts reloading the page, YouTube begins to get more and more distorted and weird, and eventually, after reloading the page enough times, the YouTube channel 666 does appear. Uh, the guy in the video then goes on to click on the YouTube channel 666 and watch some of the videos on it, and uh, believe it or not, some of the imagery in the videos are really weird, and then there's a jump scare, and then the video's over. So, I mean, this obviously kind of goes without saying, but, you know, this video isn't real. I mean, the channel that the video User66 is on has a lot of other content very similar to it. Lots of other YouTube videos that are supposed to be, like, spooky and scary. What's interesting about this video, though, is for a long time, if you were to try and visit 666's YouTube channel, YouTube would give you a message saying that this channel has been terminated. Nowadays, if you try and search for 666's YouTube channel, YouTube will tell you that this page is just unavailable. So, there is a a little bit of a mystery surrounding like what the YouTube channel 666 was and why it got deleted. Petscop. So Petscop is this like YouTube web series 
And it's about this guy named Paul who finds this, like, long-lost PlayStation 1 game, um, and he does a Let's Play of it. But as Paul plays through Petscop, he starts making these, like, weird and spooky and scary discoveries about Petscop, and it's all very mysterious and scary, and there's a lot to Petscop. It's pretty interesting. It's a pretty cool ARG. It's There's a lot to it, though, so I'm just gonna leave it off here. Russian YouTubers killed by government. I am not 100% sure as to what this entry on the list is, like, specifically, exactly referring to, but I have an idea. So, basically, there's this pretty much dead YouTube channel called FPS Russia that once made videos about showing off like different types of guns and firearms and what they were capable of doing. The YouTube channel's owner, Kyle Myers, had a partner named Keith Ratliff who would help him obtain all the firearms and guns in the videos. Where this gets weird though is in 2013, Keith Ratliff was found murdered in his very own gun store. Due to the nature of how he was shot, a suicide was ruled out, and this has led many people to theorize on who shot him. And one of these theories is that he was killed by the government. Uh, apparently, a lot of people think that the Obama administration feared how big FPS Russia had gotten, and since, you know, the Obama administration wants to take everyone's guns away, they went out and killed Keith Ratliff. Of course, you know, take this conspiracy with a grain of salt. It is literally an Alex Jones conspiracy theory. The founder of SPS Russian, the biggest gun show in the world, tied up at his offices, he's a gun manufacturer, and shot in the back of the head execution style. Tied up in a chair, expertly, shot in the back of the head. What's weird about this entry though is it specifically says Russian YouTubers killed by government. And what's weird about this is Kyle Myers and Keith Ratliff were not actually Russian. They would just put on a Russian accent in their videos as like a joke. So maybe this entry on the iceberg is like talking about something completely unrelated where a, an actual Russian YouTuber was killed by the government. But I'm pretty sure it's talking about the conspiracy theory that Keith Ratliff was killed by the government. Autopsy. Um, I am pretty sure that this entry on the list is literally just talking about how there are autopsy videos on YouTube. It's a little bit self-explanatory. 00390 is a pretty mysterious YouTube channel with a lot of weird content to cover. The content on this channel ranges from, like, really weird cooking videos to videos of some guy just driving through the streets and filming random women. As of right now, the channel has around 13,000 subscribers, and many people have theories as to what this channel, like, really is and what it's about. One of the most popular theories about the channel right now, though, is that it is ran by a kidnapper. Uh, many people believe that the videos of him, like, just driving around and filming random people is him like searching for victims to kidnap. There's also a couple other videos on the channel that lead people to believe this. There is a video called How to Move a Semi-Unconscious Body. Um, uh, the video is basically exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's a guy trying to move a what is supposedly a semi-unconscious body. It's probably an actor, but uh, you never know. There is really no true conclusion as to what this channel is. Uh, it probably is an ARG, it probably isn't real, but, uh, I mean, there has been no true conclusion that has been come to when it comes to this channel. Period. Or full stop. I don't- So, I think this entry on the list is just referring to how if you, like, just type in a period, or just like a full stop, into the search bar on YouTube, and then, like, search for it, you just find really random and weird stuff. I don't think it really goes any deeper than that. Mr. Anime. There was once a channel on YouTube known as Lenscap Productions that was ran by Trey Eric Seltzer, who went by Mr. Anime in his videos. On this channel, Trey Eric Seltzer uh, would make anime reviews. Unfortunately, Trey Eric Seltzer went on to murder his entire family. Yeah. This was a real thing that happened, it made headlines, it's pretty terrible. Web Driver Torso. From September 30th, 2016 to October 31st, 2019, a channel by the name of Web Driver Torso uploaded over 600,000 videos. Nearly all of these videos consisted of a slideshow of two rectangles, one of them red and one of them blue, just like flashing on the screen. These videos were only around like 10 seconds long, and nearly all 600,000 videos were, was just that. Just variations of these red and blue squares just flashing on screen. There were a few videos that did break this format though. One of these videos was just a video of the Eiffel Tower at night. One of these videos was a blocked episode of Aqua Team Hunger Force. And the third unique video looked to just be another one of these like weird red and blue square videos. 
but towards the end of the video, uh, the red square morphed into a silhouette of Rick Astley dancing. For a long time, people speculated as to what this channel was, if there were like coded messages in these videos, or, or if these videos were like an alien life form trying to communicate with us or something like that. After many years of mystery and speculation though, uh, Google eventually just came out and said uh, that WebDriver Torso was a channel that they used to test YouTube upload quality. Although I would say this is pretty much most definitely a closed case, it's pretty clear that WebDriver Torso is probably just a thing Google uses to test YouTube upload quality. Some people still do believe that there are hidden messages somewhere in these videos. Mukon Ash Vlogs. So Ash Vlogs is an ARG about a vlogger named Ash Vlogs who is getting stalked and at some point she gets abducted and it's this whole spooky thing. It's, there's a lot going on with this ARG, so I'm just gonna leave it up to you if you want to know more. It's pretty interesting. There seems to be a pretty dedicated like fan base of people that are into trying to solve this ARG. What's weird about this entry on the iceberg though is it says Mukon Ash Vlogs. I know what Ash Vlogs is, but I have no idea what Mukon has to do with this. I don't know what Mukon means. I've done some digging and I can't find anything related to Ash Vlogs that has to do with the term Mukon, Red Book. So there is a book out there called The Red Book, and it is the work of the Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst Carl Jung. The Red Book is this kind of documentation and exploration by Carl Jung of his inner self. It contains a lot of psychedelic drawings of his dreams and of these mythical characters. It's a pretty weird but interesting book. What's kind of weird about this entry on the list though is there is not a whole lot of content on YouTube related to Carl Jung's Red Book. Maybe this entry on the list is trying to draw some sort of connection between YouTube and the Red Book. Uh, I don't really know. I do kind of have a more reasonable explanation for this entry on the list though. And it relates to a paranormal like demon ghost summoning Mexican game called El Juego del Libro Rojo, which is literally just the Spanish translation of the Red Book game. Basically, El Juego del Libro Rojo is this kind of like Ouija board demon summoning ghost summoning game where basically you put yourself in a dark room, you take out a red book, it needs to be read, it's a book that needs to be read, and you ask the book a question, and then you randomly open up a page in the book and place down a finger on a random page and whatever word your finger lands on, that is the answer to your question. If your question was properly answered by that, you've summoned a demon or ghost or something like that. Now on the English side of YouTube, there is not a whole lot of content related to El Juego del Libro Rojo, but on the Spanish side of YouTube, there are a lot of videos about this. I would say it's not a stretch to say that this entry on the list is not referring to Carl Jung's Red Book, but instead it is referring to the Mexican demon summoning game El Juego del Libro Rojo. Sad Satan. Okay. So in June of 2015, a YouTube channel by the name of Obscure Horror Corner uploaded a playthrough of a game by the name of Sad Satan. The playthrough of Sad Satan displayed a very dark and distorted horror game and had a lot of random flashing imagery and had really distorted audio throughout the game. This playthrough of the game though gained a lot of popularity and a lot of people gained interest in this Sad Satan game. Eventually, the popular gaming news outlet called Kotaku did an interview with the owner of the Obscure Horror Corner YouTube channel. In the interview, the owner of Obscure Horror Corner claimed that he received the download link to the Sad Satan game from an anonymous subscriber who apparently had found it on the dark web. Eventually, the owner of Obscure Horror Corner provided a download link to the Sad Satan game on Reddit, but eventually it was found out that the link provided was fake. After it was found out that the download link for the game was fake, Obscure Horror Corner went on record to say that he purposely gave out a fake download link as he felt that he did not want to be responsible for the distribution of the graphic material that could be found within the Sad Satan game. At around the same time though, a person on 4chan who was claiming to be the anonymous subscriber that gave Obscure Horror Corner the Sad Satan download link in the first place posted his own download link to the Sad Satan game. This download of the game was eventually discovered though to be packed with viruses and other disgusting content that would brick the PC of anyone who would download and run it. Although there are now safe versions of the Sad Satan game you can play, it is really recommended that you do not download this version of the game because it will brick your computer. Many people have theories as to where this Sad Satan game came from in the first place, but no theories have been truly confirmed. So it is a little bit of an open mystery. Just 
don't download the bad version of the game, basically. Poco Poco Shopping. Poco Poco Shopping is a video on YouTube that kind of parodies, like, Japanese television shopping programs. The video is about these, like, doll guys that try and sell you weird things, like a devil's pacifier and, like, fresh internal organs or something like that. This video is actually made by the same guy that made the User666 video, so that's pretty cool. Chris Chan. Uh, when it comes to Chris Chan, uh, there is a lot going on, so <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna move through this pretty quickly. Chris Chan is this YouTuber vlogger person. She, formerly he, is the creator of a webcomic known as Sonichu, and due to the perceived amateur nature of this comic and the fact that she has a mental disability, she has gained a lot of followers and a lot of trolls. It is to such a point that she has a dedicated wiki to documenting everything in her life. There are entire YouTube channels that are just dedicated to talking about Chris Chan. Some people even think that Chris Chan has one of the most well-documented lives in history. The story of Chris Chan is definitely not a simple one, but if you ask me at the end of the day, it's a pretty unfortunate story. Local 58. So on YouTube there is this channel called Local 58 TV Community Television, and it's kind of this parody of like like your average local television broadcast station. But there's a catch. On this local 58 community television station, there's a lot of spooky and weird things that are broadcasted. And they're all documented here on the local 58 TV community television YouTube channel. It's an ARG. It's kind of cool. So, you know. Floracita Dreams. So I had no idea uh, what this entry on the iceberg was like at all. I've never heard of Floracita Dreams. So you know what I did? I'll tell you what I did. I went up into that YouTube search bar and I searched up Floracita Dreams. And lo and behold, there's a channel called Floracita Dreams with 6,000 subscribers and it's a Spanish YouTube channel. And to say the YouTube videos on the Floracita YouTube channel are weird uh, would be kind of an understatement. Pretty much all of the videos on this YouTube channel are just an absolute trip. Um, they're filled with tons of loud, crazy sounds and flashing imagery. It also doesn't help that the channel is nearly completely in Spanish, so I can't understand a word that is being spoken. A ton of the videos on the channel are about, like, weird, distorted faces. It's super weird. After translating and reading through a lot of the comments, though, it seems to be this whole entire channel is just some weird audio-visual art thing. Some people think it's connected to like an ARG, I think. Just in general, it's really hard for me to do research and learn about this because it's in Spanish and uh, I don't speak the language. If anyone speaks Spanish and uh, somehow manages to be interested in this, you go right ahead. Medieval found footage. So once again, uh, I had no idea what medieval found footage was referring to. Uh, I did some digging online, but there's not a whole lot about medieval found footage relating to YouTube. If you just go ahead and search medieval found footage into YouTube, it'll pull up a video called medieval found footage. It's basically just this 40 second video of random clips from medieval movies. I'm pretty sure it's kind of just like a joke about how like it's it's found footage but from medieval times even though there weren't cameras back then. Yeah, I know, I'm the joke explainer. If we look into the comments of this video though, we can get a little more insight as to what's going on with this video. A comment by Diabetes Maximus 2 says, Boys, gals, and stuff, this thing isn't real. Most of the fragments here are parts of movies from the 40s and 60s. It was debunked by 4chan when it came out, but not gonna lie, it seems like an interesting topic. So basically the comment is saying that this is fake and it was debunked by 4chan. I tried to find like the original 4chan thread he's referring to in this comment, but I couldn't. This entry on the iceberg is just kind of weird, so yeah. Silent Dork. This entry on the list is referring to a channel by the name of Silent Dork. Uh, the channel is formatted to make it seem like it's just like a vlog channel by this guy named Tyler. The whole thing though is that Tyler will upload these videos to his YouTube channel, but they'll be like distorted and glitched up by some paranormal force. And sometimes the paranormal force will just randomly upload videos to the channel without Tyler's knowing at all. It's kind of interesting. It's a pretty run of the mill ARG if you ask me. So, you know, look into it if you're bored one day. Exclamation point question mark. This one's kind of cool because I've had my own little personal experience with this one. On YouTube, there is a video, but not just any kind of video, a Mario Kart Wii Rainbow Road speedrun video. 
What's interesting about this video is that its name is literally just exclamation point question mark. And the thing about this video is you cannot search it up. If you go up into the YouTube search bar and just type in exclamation point question mark, you will not find this video. You can't. It's just impossible for some reason. The only way you can find this video is if it is recommended to you. The video has over 8.7 million views, which all come from people just randomly being recommended this video. This video is on a channel called 121KN, and it does have other videos, but the other videos on this channel are also really hard to search for because they're either in Japanese or they have really random names like A or NM. Monkey hate. So on YouTube, there is a pretty big community of people that just hate monkeys, just absolutely despise them for some reason. If you were to search up the term monkey hate into YouTube, you will find just playlist after playlist filled with videos relating to monkey hate. Some of the videos being pretty tame, though some of the videos being borderline animal abuse. A lot of the comments on these monkey videos are super weird too. Like if you were to click on one of these monkey hate playlists and watch some of the monkey videos on it, you would find comment after comment of people talking about how much they want to hurt monkeys and like terrible things they want to do to them. It's a really weird situation and a pretty unfortunate one too. There are a lot of theories as to why this like community of people dedicated to hating monkeys exists. One of the more popular theories is that these videos and comments dedicated to hating monkeys come from people that live in countries such as India where monkeys are just generally seen as pests. Although I do think this theory accounts for some of the people in this monkey hate community, I don't think it's the majority of it because a lot of these monkey hate videos and monkey hate comments are coming from people that clearly are not from India, clearly originate from an English speaking country. Another theory is that this is just some really common convoluted trolling scheme. You know, there are a lot of people on the internet out there that just like saying terrible things and posting terrible things just for the sake of being terrible and getting that shock value and getting people's attention. And some people think that's what's going on with this monkey hate community, that it's just a bunch of people trolling and saying terrible things about monkeys to get attention. Although I do think some of the people within this monkey hate community might be just kind of trolling. I don't think that's what the majority of people are. At this point, it honestly just seems to me that there are people out there that just genuinely dislike monkeys to such an extent that they feel the need to go on YouTube and make comments talking about how much they absolutely despise monkeys and how they want to hurt them. Now, obviously, you don't need to like monkeys, but it's pretty unfortunate that this community of people is allowed to just exist on YouTube. You know, animal abuse isn't really cool. I think YouTube should probably do something about this. This isn't the kind of stuff that I think should be just on YouTube. This should be reserved for probably the more far-flung corners of the internet. Anuncio Inteligente. So, Anuncio Inteligente is a Spanish term, and according to Google Translate, it translates to English as smart ad. So I had to do quite a bit of digging uh, to figure out what this entry on the iceberg was referring to, but I actually think I found it. I believe this entry on the iceberg is referring to a Facebook post made in 2019 that garnered quite a bit of attention. This post came from a man by the name of, excuse my pronunciation, Raul Navarrete. Uh, as you can see, this post is in Spanish, so I had to go about translating it. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, so I had to use Google Translate here. I think we got a pretty good translation of it, uh, but I think it kind of goes without saying that Google Translate isn't perfect, so in some spots it is a little bit weird. Uh, but basically, here's what this post says. Something super strange just happened to me. I was watching YouTube videos through my smart TV when suddenly an ad appears as it always happens on YouTube. I was going to skip it when suddenly I saw this ad. It lasted more than five hours. I was very surprised and I called my dad to see how long it lasted. I took a picture of it while I was waiting for my dad to arrive. The girl in the ad spent it talking and by the time my dad arrived, she directed her gaze towards him. Even my dad said so mockingly that she was watching him. My dad and I stood in front of the television. The girl fell silent and we felt like she was looking at us. We kept thinking that it was impossible for her to see us. It was not a video call or anything like that. It was a simple advertisement for YouTube. It was simply impossible for it to see us. We made fun of how silly it sounded. The girl kept talking, but suddenly she approached the screen and was already beginning to give us some fear and discomfort. My dad wanted to test if she could hear us and said the word Changa a few times and thus the unthinkable happened. This Asian girl said Changa back. At that moment, we get scared and I look for the control to skip the ad. Between my dad and I, we decide that we were very tired. It really was a long and tiring day, but in the way we could not ignore this fact and we better turn off the television. My doubts are, what the hell just happened? Do televisions have cameras? 
If so, then if I see it possible to be watched, and finally, YouTube was hacked, this thing that happened to my dad and I scared us. If someone has gone through something like that, I would like to know their story. This was mine. So obviously, like I said, a little bit of a little bit of a word salad there sometimes. Google Translate isn't perfect, but I think we can kind of see what's going on here. Basically, this post is saying that this guy was like watching YouTube videos on his smart TV, and then all of a sudden this five hour ad pops up. And, but it turns out it's not like your normal everyday video ad. It turns out it's like a video call in which the person in the video call can hear and see them. So is this real? Uh, I mean, although anyone can make an ad for YouTube, there are certain requirements that need to be met. For your video to be able to work as an ad on YouTube, it needs to be a certain file format. Um, but a like live stream video chat thing that can detect like audio and a webcam would not meet the file format requirements necessary to work as an ad on YouTube. The only way that I could imagine this could have possibly legitimately happened is if YouTube somehow is like secretly rolling out a new function for ads in which it's not like a video, but it's a video chat thing, which is such a far-fetched idea. I think if YouTube was planning on rolling something out like that, they would let people know about it. Not to mention, there would probably be a huge amount of legal problems with it, and there'd probably be a whole lot of privacy concerns with it. I guess something worth kind of considering is that YouTube ads can be super long. Like, there are reports out there of people getting, like, two-hour ads, three-hour ads, and so this guy saying that he got a five-hour ad isn't like too much of a stretch I guess and I guess it is like kind of technically possible that just out of pure coincidence the girl in this ad just seemed like she was watching them she just happened to say the same word that the dude said though at the end of the day I think it's pretty clear what's going on here it's a creepy pasta some dude just made this up it is pretty interesting though also like a cool idea uh this thing yeah Okay, so this Japanese text here uh, refers to a YouTube channel by the same name. I would try and translate this into English, though even in Japanese, these characters like don't make any sense. If you put this term into Google Translate and like and make it pronounce it for you, it makes this sound. Uh. So I'm just gonna call it uh from now on. So uh is a uh, <laughs> it's a weird channel. No one is entirely sure as to who's behind it and what it's really about and what's going on with it. Basically, what happens in a lot of these videos is there's like this Barbie doll guy and he just says stuff to you. I'll play a quick clip of one of the videos. I need to, uh, tell you to no this he usually says some pretty disturbing stuff to you, like uh, he wants to suck the lifeblood out of you, he talked about how he's approaching you. It's a pretty weird channel. Really, no one is quite sure as to what it's about. Some people think it's like some sort of weird, like, art project or art installation, which I guess, I mean, anything can be art if you try hard enough. Some people like to think that this channel is ran by an AI, so that's a thing. I I really don't know though. No one on the internet seems to know what this channel really is and what it's about and what it's supposed to be and what the point of it is. It's just mainly videos of this Barbie doll guy just saying stuff to you. Honestly, if you ask me, I think it's just weird for the sake of being weird. Some people say that there's like hidden messages in some of these videos and there totally could be. But if you ask me, I think this is just kind of a channel that's just super weird for the sake of being super weird. Sequel to Me at the Zoo. So this entry on the list is a little bit weird, but I'll give it my best shot. So if you didn't know, the very first video uploaded to YouTube is called Me at the Zoo, and it's by YouTube's co-founder, Jod Kareem. Uh, this video has kind of a little bit of a, a diseased history. It's had quite a few problems throughout its time on YouTube. For a while, it had a really bad problem with bots spamming the comment section. Like, it was really bad at a point. In fact, it was so bad that Me at the Zoo was the first video to reach 10 million comments. The Me at the Zoo video has also had a pretty big problem where the video will be hacked and have the description changed. The description of the video has been changed to many things throughout the year. At one point it was a sub to sub scam, at one point it was a rick roll, and at one point the description read, update video at 10 million subs. So I think this entry on the iceberg, sequel to me at the zoo, is talking about how the description of the me at the zoo video at one point read, update video at 10 million subs. So like, there'd be like a sequel to me at the zoo at 10 million subs. I think it should be noted though that the hacking problem with this video seems like it's come to an end. Um, the description now just reads, the first video on YouTube. Maybe it's time to go back to the zoo. Happy anniversary.
Mara Murray was a woman who disappeared on the evening of February 9th, 2004, after a car crash on Route 112 near Woodsville, New Hampshire. She was a 21-year-old nursing student, and since this car crash, her whereabouts are still unknown. She just disappeared. Now, in of itself, this is a pretty weird story. But here's where it takes an even weirder turn. Exactly eight years after Mara Murray's disappearance, a YouTube channel by the name of 112 Dirtbag uploaded a video called Happy Anniversary. Basically, what happens in this Happy Anniversary video is there's this old guy who just stares at the camera and starts manically laughing. He just hysterically breaks down, starts laughing at the camera. He starts winking at the camera. He's missing some teeth. He's a greasy old guy. It goes on like this for a minute, and the video ends with the words, Happy Anniversary splashing on the screen. Might I remind you, this video was uploaded on the 8th anniversary of Mara Murray's disappearance. So already this is seeming kind of weird, a little bit suspicious. You know, a weird old guy uploads a video of him laughing at the camera on the 8 year anniversary disappearance of someone. Although at first it kind of seems possible that this is just a really weird coincidence. But after you start looking into the name of the YouTube channel, 112 Dirtbag, it's pretty clear that it's not a coincidence. 112 isn't just some random number. Mara Murray crashed her car on route. 112 and Mara Murray's father has gone on record calling the kidnappers or abductors of Mara Murray dirtbags. So at this point it kind of starts adding up a little bit. It kind of seems like it's possible that 112 dirtbag is ran by uh, the person who abducted Mara Murray and he decided to upload the happy anniversary video as kind of like a way to mock Mara Murray's family or something like that. Eventually there actually was an investigation into the 112 dirtbag channel. And it turns out that this guy in the video is Alden Olson, and he's just kind of a nut. Apparently, the local police station actually looked into him after this whole happy anniversary thing, and they found that he has little to no connection with the Mara Murray story at all. He's just some crazy old guy who wanted to insert himself into the Mara Murray situation for attention. Till this day, though, the true whereabouts of Mara Murray are still unknown, so... <laughs> YouTube watches you. So this is it, we're at the bottom now. And the last one is just YouTube watches you. Honestly, a little bit of an anticlimactic end if you ask me. The fact that YouTube watches you isn't really much of a secret. Pretty much everyone knows this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, YouTube will take note of the kind of videos that interest you. It'll watch you, it'll see what interests you, and it will recommend you videos that seem to fit your interests. That's just what YouTube does. It's almost as though that every YouTube account is personalized. Huh. Yeah, that was it. That was the YouTube iceberg. From the tip of the iceberg to the deepest, darkest depths, we uh, pretty much tried to identify everything on the list. And some of the things on this list are pretty clear, and some of the things on this list are still a little bit mysterious. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, anyway, um, uh, see you later. Yeah,